few years back, I bought a self end lathe. It's a Model C 9-inch lathe. When I bought it, it was in good enough shape that I just plugged it in and ran it. After we moved here to Richland, I sat underneath the bench for a while because I didn't have any place to put it. When I got ready to bolt it down, I found there was a problem. Working on the South Bend lathe today, one of the things that I wanted to do is take a look at this connection box that was mounted to the motor. Just had a screw going into that hole there and some wires and an insulating wrap around it. Looks like a piece of gasket material. When I pulled it loose, the wires themselves are pretty well shot. A lot of bare open connections on it. Looks like the windings should be all right. It's the wires that are fastened to those connectors inside there that are screwed up. So what I'm going to do is disassemble this rat's nest and understand the wiring diagram. To do that, take it apart and write down the number locations or the orientation of the different components. It's going to take a little while because I'm going to have to dissect this friction tape that's glommed onto the thing without snapping the wires off because if I snap the wires off I'm going to lose control of where they go back and I want to replace them but I need to know where they fit man did they put a bunch of junk on this thing This connector needs to be salvaged too, because that's what ties in the lathe to the motor so that I'll have forward and reverse. I'd say this was an amateur repair, but I've seen some people who call themselves professionals that have done similar things. Sometimes it's just a situation where you try and get the thing running long enough to get you out of this tight spot that you're in. And nothing is more permanent than a temporary fix. Oh man, they soldered this thing together. It is a mess. reason it had problems is they put it together with lamp cord. Stranded wire. Too small. It's a quarter horsepower motor. Doesn't sound like much, but draws more than what a light bulb does. It's only by the grace of God that this thing even lasted as long as it did. I don't have any wire tags. So I'm going to make do. At one time there might have been a circuit that explained what the wiring situation was on this, but I don't see it. So I've numbered them. This is one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to number these wires accordingly. Once I have the wire numbered, I'm going to cut it out. You 
can tell the difference in the size of the wire. That's the lamp cord that they wired to this nice thick number 14 wire in there. And therefore, it really has no ability to handle the amperage. This is wire number three, and this is wire number four. Tuck those over here out of the way. So then I can get in here and work on the next two. Now that I can see down in there a little better, got some of the wires out of the way, I can make notations as to how the wires on the motor itself go. So I will lay them out on this piece of paper and say wire number three goes to so and so, wire number four goes to so and so, and work my way around that way. Okay, looking at the circuit, number six goes to the top right. It's an ugly little brown wire. Number five goes to the bottom right. pair of needle nose pliers to reach in there and grab a hold of that little wire pull it out and get it tucked back in. This repair was done quite a while ago. A modern day monkey would have used shrink wrap tubing Probably plastic tape. Back in the 40s and early 50s, they didn't have plastic tape. They had friction tape and they used it for everything.
isn't that convenient? Same numbering diagram I chose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is designed to be panel mounted. But our handyman here wanted to mount it directly to the motor. What amazes me is I've been using this lathe in this condition for quite some time. Had it at least two years before we moved. Used it to make the parts for the chisel repair. That's what I used to turn the mandrel on. And with all those bare wires in there, it didn't short out once. Pretty amazing. <clears throat> now, because it's a motor, it is better to have stranded wire. You don't want to have solid wire on a motor. It will tend to vibrate and crack. So I'm going to make extension wires and cable them up and bring them out through this opening through a connector. I need to have six wires in the cable so we're gonna have to be a little fancy with the way we do that. Have to do some thinking on this one. 